time for anybody in the heart of God. Why do we need billions and billions of dollars? Of course. But this is the very same thing that is carrying humanity and the world towards uh, the destruction. And it is important that we have to uh, help change the mind of the government. My name is Togastai, the Watsuta Nation. I'm Frida Houston from the Udistat Dan Clan. People in the headwaters. Uh, my people's land has been impacted by exploration and mining. Lionsgate Metals is now sold to a Chinese company and pipelines. We have Apache Corporation, Chevron, and Enbridge and Coastal Gas Link who, are, who think they're going to go through our territories with pipelines that come from the tar sands. And, and my dad's territory, who's from a different clan, but we utilize his territory because he's my dad. His territory was destroyed by Equity Mine, a silver mine, where they had their tailing spawn leak into their lake and the rivers that was once plentiful with salmon. Now they can no longer get salmon and nobody wants to hunt the moose because they eat the vegetation from that pollution and some of our elders got sick from eating moose from that territory because they got mercury poisoning and their bodies start shaking after they ate the moose that came from that territory so that territory that used to be once rich is totally destroyed and currently we have Lionsgate Metals who's been doing exploration on the, one of the only lakes that we still have that we fish char and irregardless of what we've said to them they still bulldoze their way in threaten us with court injunctions and have recently because of all the opposition they received from my family they've sold their exploration rights to a Chinese company and are now going to try and go in and do way more drilling along the lakes and we keep saying no because exploration leads to mining and we refuse to have any mining in that territory as that's the only place we still get char and we re depend on that. My family depends on that salmon for our food source. And government and industry keep issuing out permits. They don't care that we're saying no and they just ignore us. And now because all of the, we have three pipelines trying to come through our territory. We've been so focused on trying to block the pipelines. That's why we lost track of Lions Gate and they were able to sell out their mineral rights out from under our noses because we're so tied up with uh, opposing the pipelines because they're, they're about to start construction. They're already start trying to drill. Denise, you talk as you, guys that you, like, um, like the guy said earlier, the Wetuten are in in the pathway of these proposed pipelines. We have some uh, so-called liquid natural gas pipelines. They're actually fracking pipelines. And we're also dealing with oil pipelines from the tar sands. Well, these pipeline companies and the extraction companies that get the liquid natural gas or the fracking gas and the tar sands, tar sands oil out of the ground are doing it with mining permits. They get their permits quickly passed through government because the mining regulations are a lot easier than oil and gas are. So because the liquid natural gas is unconventional gas or fracking gas, and they use shale, to, they, they drill down into shale deposits, inject toxins, and a, lots and lots and lots of water into the ground. It's considered a mining, a mining project. And they get, they get their, their their permits passed because of this really quickly. When, when these pipelines break, either in Canada or in the States, the, the, the consequences are a lot less than it would have been if they classified it under oil and gas. Because these are classified as mining, as mining products, the, the consequences of a spill are a lot less and the government orchestrated it that way. So we, our family, decided to move out in the, in the front of these pipelines. They had a proposed corridor that was supposed to come through the Unistotan territory. And we built a cabin directly in the path of these proposed corridors. Our family moved into that corridor since last August. We 
have supporters from all over the world that come out and live with us, that help us in a camp, that develop a solidarity and network networking program that spans the globe. We've been out there for almost a year now, and uh, we took a break to come down to this conference as well as or this meeting, as well as um, going out to Victoria to attend another gathering out there with Indigenous people to, you know, rally support for what we're doing. What we're doing is we're going to be stopping these pipelines. We need people from all walks of life to step up with us. These pipelines are going to attempt to push their way in through our territories this year. We know their plans, they're planning on doing it. The exact date is unknown. You know, we know the government knows what the, what the date is going to be. We know the security agencies know what those dates are going to be. And of course, these pipeline companies and oil and gas companies know what those dates are going to be. So we're dealing with Pacific Trails Pipeline, which is the first one that wants to push its way in. The next one is um, Pacific Trails Pipeline is owned by Chevron and Apache. We, we walked right by their offices earlier. We're also dealing with another one called Coastal Gaslink, which is owned by Shell, and of course Enbridge. We're going to stop these pipelines and we need people's help. When they decide to push OE in, we're asking people to, to do things in solidarity with us from all over the world. They've already done that a couple of times with us when we kicked these guys out. We had two, two instances over the last two years where Pacific Trails tried to come in. A year and a half ago, they tried to get in with a drilling company that were attempting to do some directional drilling under some spawning channels in our, in our homelands. These spawning channels are the places where the salmon that we depend on are born. They were attempting to do drilling there. We kicked them out. We gave them five days to leave. They did it. There was a blizzard going on, but they had to get all their equipment out of there and they made sure they got out of there. A year later, they sent in surveyors. On November 20th of this past year, we confronted some surveyors out there that were working for Apache. We told them, you cannot come into our territory. We issued them a feather of trespass and told them that the feather of trespass is the only warning they're going to get. They had no choice but to leave and apologize for what they were doing. We told them if anybody else comes in from this company again, we're free to do what we want to with them. The consequences are without and consequences. So what we're going to be doing over the next while is we have, a, we have a spring camp plan, which is starting next week. The pipeline companies moved their, their right-of-way path from the original path where, the, where our cabin is now. They moved it just south of our cabin to cross over the, the, the Wudzinqua or the Morris River. And the, the three pipeline companies have these routes that they have that they want to kind of push just south of where we're living now. So this, this spring, in about a week from now, there's something that we're calling a spring construction slash permaculture camp. We're inviting people to come out to help us build some pit houses. These are traditional homes of our people. We want to build some pit houses and some permaculture gardens directly in the path of these pipelines. And we're going to move into those. We're going to occupy our lands like our ancestors did. If people are interested in applying to come out to work in a camp, it does start next week, but if you're interested, you can get a hold of the Victoria Forest Action Network. A woman, a lady named uh, Zoe Blunt is taking applications for people who are interested. There's a large caravan of people leaving the lower mainland here from Victoria and Vancouver that will be heading up north to assist with the, with the construction of, the, of these pit houses as well as permaculture gardens. Later on this summer, we're looking at doing something else. Um, it's going to be our fourth annual action camp. It's become quite popular. We have people from all over the world, all over the planet, that come out and join us in it. And it's a life-changing experience. There's a lot of people who've been to these camps that can vouch for the fact that the camp changed their lives. It's an amazing experience. You get a chance to come out and meet indigenous people. You get a chance to be a part of some real resistance rather than a campaign that an NGO put together, but some real resistance. Frida here wants to sing a song for you guys. It's a song that uh, belongs to her clan. I'll let her explain it a bit. This song belongs to my clan and the words Initially when our song, the song was written, it was written for cabin openings on my people's territory. And the words, they actually say, take me back, take me back, and my heart will be good. So 
The, re the reason why I like singing this song now is because Mother Earth is telling us, take me back, take me back, and my heart will be good. And a little while I've been here, even though as humans we're destro destroying Mother Earth by the, all the cement we see around us, and I said, look, they can't even kill Mother Earth. She's poking through the cement. I see flowers trying to come up. I see the grass trying to come up. Mother Earth is strong. Even though people are destroying her, destroying the waters, she will survive. But we as a nation and people cannot survive without water. Everybody needs to stand up. You can't depend on your neighbors or other people to take on this fight to protect Mother Earth because not only indigenous people will suffer, everybody in this world will suffer. So we need all need to stand up. Do your part. So if you want to learn more about what we're doing, we have a website, it's called unistotencamp.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, it's called Unistotencamp. Like the page, you'll get updates on a regular basis on what we're doing. Like I said, uh, we're being harassed out there on a regular basis. We live way out in the wilderness. To get to our camp, you have to drive up north to Houston, which is 16 hours from here. And from there, you have to go south of Houston for an hour, driving on the back of a logging road to a place called, a, a place that's about 44 and a half kilometers down, a place called the Morris Lake Forest Service Road. 
And from that point, you have to hop onto a snowmobile or hike in another 22 kilometers to where we're living. We've been there all winter, and we're going to live the rest of our lives there. That's what we've committed to doing. Our ancestors have been waiting for us, out, for us out there, waiting for us to return to our lands, and that's what we've done. And we're going to keep doing this for the rest of our lives. My daughter here, Satsi, decided to move out there last summer with us, and she's been living out there, out there with us all winter. And it's an amazing experience. I'm really proud to say that uh, she's my daughter, and she's learning all that she can about our traditional way of living and living out on the territories like our ancestors. It's a wonderful experience and uh, like I said, there's some camps coming up this summer. Uh, visit our websites, keep track of what we're doing and uh, join us in our struggle. And I'd just like to share with everybody here, indigenous people of these lands, your ancestors are still around, everywhere around us. You need to honor them. They fought and struggled to protect the lands. Everybody needs to step up and start fighting for Mother Earth. They're there, they're waiting. Once you step up, they're gonna join you and you're gonna win your fight. You need to just step up and start fighting for your lands. Thank you so much. All right guys, so this is the People's Gala. Uh, it's uh, past 8.30. The gala of the miners is just ending, so you might see some of the people uh, walking around here. Uh, we want to make our, our presence known, so thank you all for coming.